Hello and welcome to whiskey.com where fine spirits meet. Today we're still at the Isle of Harris distillery, but today we're looking at their gin production. Yeah, they're also doing gin uh, since 2015 already and their gin production, if you want to know more about the history of the Isle of Harris distillery, go to the whiskey video uh, there I have all the history facts about how the distillery was set up. Um, yeah, let's talk about the gin. And there, it's a bit of a regional thing with the gin here because they have one speciality and that's the sugar kelp. Sugar kelp is like that stuff down there. Um, it's yeah, a kelp, um, but this sugar kelp is not growing in the sea, but actually in the sweet water lake. So no salt water, just sweet water. They harvest it in spring and that's also yeah, done in a very sustainable way. They don't harvest too much, they harvest manually by hand. There's really a, a guy that's jumping into the water and with his scuba suit and just harvesting it. I think that's not without danger because if you get entangled then yeah, you might run out of oxygen if you can't come out. So you have to be an expert to do that. And yeah, so in the spring he harvests it by hand and does it in a sustainable way so it doesn't, doesn't harvest, too, harvest too much. And during the spring and summertime then it grows enough that you don't have the uh, sea snails or the, the lock snails and the otters that hunt there. They, they still have enough uh, land to, um, or enough kelp to, to um, yeah, do their thing. And yeah, that's the, their, their main part of what they are saying is like their second base ingredient to juniper. And yeah, how the gin is made, let's, let's just go in and find out. Behind me have, we have the wall of the botanicals, which is really nice to show everything. And you can actually open them and actually smell them how they smell. And first of all, juniper. If you're making a gin, you have to have juniper because the main flavor of a gin should be juniper. That's kind of the law, but main flavor is a bit hard to define. Oh yeah, that's some good juniper. And what their second most or their main ingredient is, is the sugar kelp. You can see it here and that's uh, Lewis McKenzie who is harvesting that that sugar kelp and that is yeah, really nice. I'm not quite sure if they use it fresh because it, they actually do dry it, vacuumize and you can't really open them and show them to the customers because they would degrade pretty fast whereas this stuff here around uh, is yeah, pretty durable when it's in a dried state. Then we have coriander seed. This here is bitter orange that is actually pretty nice. I had a few orange peels and stuff that I could smell and this here is ha oh, this is really bitter so this really reminds more of that baking flavors that you you put in when you want to have bitter orange I'm not quite sure if that is everybody internationally does that but in German cooking you do that then we have a bit of uh, yeah sweeter cassis uh, cassis barge and angelica root and yeah a few more so in total they have eight botanicals and they even have a little bit of a smelling how their yeah, botanical mixture except for the kelp is actually smelling oh and that is a bunch of smells really a, a lot of smells in here and that is whew, crazy that is whew, very intense and then we have something really cool. They actually do a, a run just with uh, kelp and that is well, how they call it sugar kelp aromatic water. So they probably distill water with sugar kelp in it and that gives you then an aromatic water that you can add to your gin and make it flavor even more like sugar kelp which well, I find quite cool because that's their speciality and you can even boost the speciality of that. Um, all these botanicals are used in yeah, the maceration and distillation. Let's have a look over there how uh, that is actually done. Behind me is the gin still and it's a small still and it's called the Dotach. It's named after a small woman that lived on the island that um, Anderson Bakewell, the founder of the distillery, actually bought in the 60s and she was not really glad that he bought the island. So she was a really yeah, feisty woman that argued a lot and they actually became really good friends. And yeah, she was already pretty, pretty old, so she passed away. But in memory of her, this little still is called the Dotach. And what the distillery here do is, first of all, they actually do a maceration. So they take all the ingredients, all their botanicals and put them into a pot for 24 hours 
and uh, let them macerate, let the, yeah, the oils and the flavors and everything dilute into the neutral grain spirit. And after the 24 hours, it is pumped into the dotach, the, the still, and they then have uh, take out the kelp that's actually in a separate bag and they don't distill the kelp. Probably you'd get out to bitter stuff and so they don't do that. And the rest of the, the botanicals is then distilled inside the grain alcohol inside the still. So it's not in the vapors, but it's actually inside the still. And that is then, yeah, normally distilled. Normally is, yeah, not quite right because uh, they don't do uh, any, uh, they do feints and foreshots, but they actually throw that away. They don't reuse that. So that is actually just going to waste. And so they have a more of a, yeah, a pure spirit, but also they don't use as much of the old spirits. So that is actually a bit yeah, kind of wasteful. They only take the, the good parts out. So quality and waste is a bit of a, a negotiation here where they going more into the quality bit. Yeah, so that is then distilled and then they water it down to 45% ABV. And that is actually already then the gin. And yeah, let's have a bit of a try how that gin tastes and see, uh, have a few questions about that. So I'm sitting here with uh, Shona McLeod. Is That's that right. Is that right pronounced? Yeah. Okay. Very good. So you were born and raised on, on the island and you joined the company here in 2014. That's right. And you've been here with the beginning and a lovely, thank you very much for showing us around and, and showing us everything. We always love to take people around and uh, they leave us friends always, so that's great. Yeah, it's, it's a lovely island, so having been raised here must be a really nice experience. And um, you told me that that area around here that didn't used to be, what, what it used to be before 2000, like... Well, I was brought up just a few steps <laughs> along from where we stood outside earlier on, just along oh, okay, by the so pier there. Like so really local, local. I, I was brought up in Tarbert, <laughs> yeah. And uh, when I was growing up, this whole area where we're sitting right now was the shoreline. Oh, this was shore. This was shore. Yeah, the shore went right up to the back of our car park at the back of the building, okay. and it was infilled um, at some point with a view to perhaps building a tweed uh, oh, okay. visitor centre on it. But it never happened. And when the distillery came along, they were looking for various um, sites, and this is one that they okay. That so on. it should have been really a tweed workshop or a tweed shop. Well, or there, there were certainly then, plans, um, and, and for now that. it's a distillery. Yeah, but uh, nothing was, huh? nothing came of that. So yeah. the <laughs> land sat here, and it was um, mm -hmm. seemed quite perfect for building a distillery on because. As you know, a distillery needs a fresh water source, and there's one just half a mile from here, oh, yeah, at the top yeah. of the hill. So and it's this filtered, is where they very, built. very mineral, mineral, low minerals in there. Yeah, softest yeah. water in Scotland, we believe. It runs over Ooh. Louisian nice. It's the rock that the islands are made from, really, and that's some of is the oldest like, rock. Like this, or this, this, is this is different. This is an orthosite, so this is quite okay. an unusual rock oh, that okay. um, can be found in one mountain in South Harris. Ah, oh, okay. Uh, so but Louisian rock is what the, um, most of the islands are. Yeah, I've heard that there's a lot of different rocks here on the Outer Hebrides. Mm -hmm. Very though. old, very, very old rock. Oh, okay. Yeah, rocks is really a big thing here. And yeah, <laughs> it's very rocky. It's a rocky place. So the rain, uh, which we get plenty of running down the mountain behind us here over oh. that really, really ancient, million, millions of years old rock, yeah. is creating very soft water we yeah. uh, well you've got a lot of water around here so uh, you have the the locks and there's the kelp in there and the kelp is kind of your thing with the gin so how was that idea created so we decided on sugar kelp because in the early days when the gin recipe was being developed and the distillery was being built uh, an ethnobotanist was taken on board to have a look locally at what botanicals might be Mm -hmm. suitable for the gin along with the others that had been picked which are quite often quite exotic and don't grow anywhere near Harris mm -hmm. um, and she looked at various things and then because of our ties with the sea and our mm -hmm. geographical location right next to the sea um, she had a wee look under there and <laughs> uh, decided on sh that sugar kelp might be something that could be a potential uh, botanical which hadn't been used before anywhere for gin production okay. at that but stage. Is it, was it there as in the, you think you have a kelp drying 
Yeah, so the, the, kelp, the kelp grows around the coastline, yeah. obviously, locally here. It's harvested mm -hmm. by our diver, Lewis McKenzie, who, uh -huh. who dives for it specifically for us. Okay. And uh, then it's processed at the Hebridean Whiskey... Uh, sorry, Hebridean... I have to say that again. <laughs> the Hebridean Whiskey Plant. Um, it's processed at the Hebridean Seaweed Factory in Stornoway. Mm -hmm. So okay. they dry it, process it, and vacuum pack it, and then they deliver it to us. And we use it as a dried botanical... Ah, okay. engine. Yeah, otherwise you could just do it like in spring when it's harvested. Otherwise, yeah, you well, need to dry. It, it can only be harvested at certain times of year, mm -hmm. ideally. Mm -hmm. uh, but the diver knows which beds to go back to and, and to allow others to regrow. And um, he knows the best time of year to harvest mm -hmm. it. So. Okay, so you really took a look at uh, what is uh, locally, what is what makes Harris Harris, and that was the kelp. The no? connection <laughs> with the sea was the biggest thing for us, yes. definitely. Yeah, it, it, you know? I mean, I've already had that before, uh, your, your gin, but uh, I, I can remember that was like, whoa, this, this is really sea character. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's all I can remember. Uh, yeah. Let's have a look. Okay. So, so if we... you want to try a, a little um, neat first mm -hmm. in our tasting glasses, so it's, what and then was we'll it? build a gin and tonic. 45. 45%, mm -hmm. yeah. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Oh, you have the juniper so, mm -hmm. right on the nose, and but you realize it's not one of these fresh ones and one of well, one of these spicy ones, but one of the yeah seaweed ones. It's it's strange to say, but you don't get that very often, do you? So we've got nine botanicals. It's not mm -hmm. overly botanical. Some can have kind of twenty-two or more botanicals. Mm -hmm. um, we have eight plus the sugar kelp, so that's yeah. nine botanicals in total, and. Obviously, the sugar kelp gives it a maritime mm -hmm. uh, character, but other than that, it's quite yeah. difficult to pinpoint exactly what it does. So yeah. we believe that it changes the other botanicals around it and just creates something really special flavor-wise. I, like, I like it. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, you, yours, I'm, I'm always excited about how round the gin is, and that is mm -hmm. really lovely around here. That. So um, I explained to you earlier, we discard the heads and tails when we mm -hmm. make our gin, so it's a very clean spirit. We're just yeah. using the... The heart of the spirit. Very round. I love that <laughs> because you can just you can just smell it when you when you have other spirits. Okay, let's go away from from matured spirits, but other clear spirits are are much more sharper. Mm -hmm. This is just so round and lovely. You can, you can almost get, go in really deep without mm -hmm. feeling any alcohol. Yeah, even at full strength, forty-five yeah. percent. So the botanicals I showed you earlier, you can almost visualize them when you smell it. Mm -hmm. yeah, you can I go do. through the juniper, the spice, you mm -hmm. know, from cassia bark and the java pepper. Yeah, I can remember. That's <laughs> always the, the nice thing when you have a little distillery tour and you, you smell into the botanicals or you find it near the still. You can find so much in here again. And mm. when we went into the gin still room and uh, our distiller mm -hmm. was taking out the bag of botanicals, that, that smell you got directly <laughs> um, reflects what you're getting in the glass, yeah. doesn't it? Oh, now I get a bit of more fruitiness in here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we get um, some citrus notes from yep. the coriander and uh, the bitter orange peel, obviously. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Slanche. <laughs> Slanche. <laughs> mm. So we always recommend sampling the gin neat mm -hmm. before you build your gin and tonic. Mm -hmm. Mm. <laughs> Takes a bit and then it kicks in with the kelp. Mm. That's the effect that we're looking for. Is, uh, major <laughs> excitement and enjoyable. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it, it comes on first with a <laughs> well, classical gin, juniper, oh yeah. And then, ooh. Mm. Mm. And yeah, you said citrus note, mm -hmm. mm. but more of a... It feels like grapefruit, but bitter yes, orange, yeah. It it's, does feel like grapefruit, and that's mm -hmm. why we uh, decided to recommend just serving ah, okay. it with grapefruit. Although coriander and orange mm -hmm. peel are usually orange flavors, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, there's nothing of grapefruit mm -hmm. specifically in there, but once it's distilled, then that's kind of the flavor we get. Mm -hmm. And then it finishes with the sugar kelp giving that kind of umami mm -hmm. flavor at the end. It's a little mm -hmm. bit savory just at umami. the very end, yeah. Yeah, that's 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 what I wanted to say. That the it has that kind of not spiciness, just volume to mm -hmm. it. That that you fill, do get the fills spice, the and mouth. then it kind of finishes mm -hmm. off with that. They do have a bit Almost of a spice, like but a it's a, a little spice on the side. But this umami, yeah, that that's a good good description for it. Like, 
like a good, I would say, like, like a good um, cattle stew or, or when you boiled cattle, uh, boiled uh, beef. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. A little it, bit it of that. It is like, savory. Like, I, I think savory, the, um, yeah. the sugar kelp gives mm -hmm. a, a sort of savory flavor to them. Mm -hmm. So you recommend uh, the grapefruit? So um, let's build a gin and tonic, shall we? Oh yeah. 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 So obviously ice, if you like, but lots of people like to drink air gin neat. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I Which do. <laughs> I would never have done before, but uh, I do now, occasionally. So we want uh, a nice large measure of mm -hmm. Harris gin over some ice served with red grapefruit. You can pour your own ratio. How do you like your gin? Little tonic. I, I've half? never had half and half. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. Maybe a third, two thirds tonic. It depends how you like it. Yeah, I'll, I'll usually do half and half. That's that's, that's good. Okay. Is that is that like a, a strong or, a, or like a? This is a Scottish made tonic uh, mm -hmm. made by a lady that we met very early on. She started producing mm -hmm. Scottish tonic when we started making mm -hmm. gin and whiskey here. And uh, we met her and we tried it with our gin and there are so many tonics on the market, as you know, hundreds mm. of them. Mm. But uh, we always recommend Walter Gregor because it suits our gin. It's not terribly mm. carbonated. Um, oh, okay. There's no artificial sweeteners in it and either. And this is now like really kelpy what you have here. So this is distilled sugar kelp mm -hmm. made by a friend of ours uh, called Amanda. Mm -hmm. Amanda Sowden. So distilled sugar kelp, it's 22% mm -hmm. alcohol. Oh, okay. And it adds much more of that maritime flavour to the gin. Oh, okay. So nice. do you want to take a sip without? I'll and take, then take we a sip without a and then I can, yeah. can see what, what the difference is. Hmm. Oh, I like it. Mm. Mm -hmm. Also, the tonic doesn't go overboard. Yeah. Mm. Mm. I'm not personally a fan of flavored tonics, but it's up to mm. everybody's individual. Well, yeah, you can. You know. that, that's the thing with tonics. You can you can vary a lot. And so a few drops of mm -hmm. aromatic water. Mm -hmm. I do like it. Um, in the tonic, it, uh, with the gin and tonic, it's it it keeps that that volume that it has mm -hmm. comes out pretty good because of the yeah enough juniper and yeah it's. It's not one of these very sweet ones, but that's really probably from the tonic. Usually when you have the, you know, the mainstream tonics, they're much, much sweeter. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. it's um, the, <clears throat> excuse me, the lack of artificial sweeteners and it really mm. helps. Oh, okay. You don't, you don't get that yeah. uh, overriding flavor. I like that. It's, it's a Here's very it. refreshing and voluminous or savory drink. Mmm. Refreshing. Mmm. Citrus, floral, refreshing. <laughs> it covers quite a lot of flavor categories. And it really feels like you're standing at the pier. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> I like that. That's great. Mm. We've got a real, you know, obviously, like I said earlier, geographic connection with the sea because we're on yes. an island. But um, mm. many people, you know, in decades mm. and generations gone by, went to sea. Men would go to sea to mm. work and travel. And people just had, we have to use the sea to travel when you live on an island. <laughs> Not sure. Whether it's for, for numerous reasons. and um, But it always brings you home, the sea. And the yeah. mountains <laughs> always brings you home. So I, I have to say, yeah, you captured the like vicinity or the locality really good in the glass. It really <laughs> has a lot of marine flavors in mm. there, I would say. Definitely. It's strange that I, I would, would have, I always thought that like the sugar kelp was growing in the sea, but it's a, it's in sweet water, right? In sweet water. Or like like a loch, not not the, the No no the sea. sea no no it's sea. Sea lochs, yeah. Like sea lochs. Sea lochs, yeah. Uh loch is not always Not a freshwater loch. Not a fre freshwater, not yeah. sweet water, freshwater. So a freshwater loch is an inland loch. Inland loch. So it's a, a loch that is like like sea going yes, into the yeah, ah, absolutely. Okay. Ah, okay. So it is with, with sea water. Ah, okay. Yes it yeah. is, yeah. No. So the, the <laughs> sea lochs, um if we look at the map or if mm -hmm. you're on the ferry they're like fjords going in sort of all the way along the coast. Yeah, that's So the, the sugar kelp is harvest, harvested from mm. sea lochs. Yeah. <laughs> ah, okay, sea loch. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it's always a bit strange when you travel. It's like, yeah, that's a loch. Yeah, but that's also the sea. Ah, okay, that's a loch, not the sea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's two types of loch. Sea yeah. loch and um, inland freshwater loch. Freshwater loch, okay. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So, okay, that's where the salty marine flavors come from. Yeah. I was like, yeah, really? Freshwater log. <laughs> I think that's what makes the gin so good is mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. that combination of, you know, 
citrus and floral sweetness with mm-hmm. the savouriness from the yep. from the sugar cow. I like it that it really it kicked off with us. Uh, we we really sell it sells good, and uh, I really like it because it's. It's far away from one of these lifestyle gins that are so sweet and just fruity, sweet, mm-hmm. fruity, sweet. But this is, I would say, it has a bit of a fresh, fruity note to it, but just as a note. Mm. And the rest is just so savory, umami, and voluminous. That's I like it. Lots of character, just like mm-hmm. the like the new mix. <laughs> so we we decided to very, well, obviously we we're a, what, first and foremost a whiskey mm-hmm. distillery. So. We didn't want to be too distracted by mm-hmm. following market trends and making lots of different types of gin. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was one reason, but I prefer the reason that it can't get any better than <laughs> what we have here. Uh, yeah. So what, no need to try and play around with mm-hmm. it too much. Yeah, I like it. It's a, it's a good product. I'm, I'm really excited about what, what we have with the whiskey, but yeah, that, that takes a bit of time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah, thank you very much for the experience. That was really You're very lovely. And, and I did learn a bit about the gin making. It's, it's always interesting to see, see how that stuff mm-hmm. is made. Yeah. Great, so, so it was really nice to meet you and, yeah. and have you here mm-hmm. for the day. So, yeah, thank you very much for watching. And if you found this video interesting, then please feel free to share it with your friends and see you next time.